Thank you very much. Um, and I am I'm very pleased um, to be making this presentation on behalf of um, the research team that worked on this very topic, which is an assessment of inequality estimates the case of Ghana. And my presentation is going to be following this outline. So I'm going to provide a brief introduction where I try to provide some brief context to the study and um, state our main objective um, for this study. And I also like to provide a much broader context of what the narrative of inequality has been in Ghana, what the story has been over the years. And then I would get into the, the weight inequality narrative, focusing more on the kinds of data that they use, and then the inequality story that emerges from the UNU wider research team analysis of um, their data. And then what I would do then um, at the end of the to conclude my talk would be to share ACES um, narrative of inequality based on what we do with um, the analysis, the inequality analysis we carry out using the national um, level data. So, I mean, we would all agree that measuring, accurately measuring inequality is definitely critical when it comes to um, researchers trying to understand, um, you know, the trends and then the, um, for, for effective policy making, right? We, we usually know that when you have less reliable and inconsistent um, inequality measures, it makes it more difficult for us to see um, the trends in terms of um, monitor whether in inequality is increasing or um, decreasing. Um, sometimes um, the inequality estimates that we get, even for the same country, is different, using you know different um, measures. Some, like um, Carlos already mentioned, sometimes we have consumption inequality. Sometimes we have um, income inequality. Even for the same country, using the same data set is different. Another difficulty that we find is that um, is, is usually um, not easy trying to undertake comparative studies, um, maybe comparing inequality across different countries in sub-Saharan Africa or even for different regions of the world. It's very difficult because the measures are not the same. So this um, project that the UNU wider team has embarked on is definitely a good step in terms of they trying to make um, data more accessible to facilitate inequality research across the globe and particularly with their work on the weight companion which tries to standardize the measures of um, income inequality which will make it possible for us to be able to carry out these cross-country analysis or even for the same country over time we get the same measure and we'll be able to see whether inequality is decreasing or um, increasing but what we do observe from the weight companion is um, at least for the case of Ghana is the fact that we do find some disparities in terms of the measure of income inequality that has been um, estimated by the UNU wider team and what we also do at um, ASA. And so um, basically for this particular paper, what we try to do is to investigate the extent to which, you know, the observed um, disparities that we find from the weight companion and from our own um, research, how those, how we could actually consider those variances or those disparities to be reasonable. So in the paper, what we do is to um, explore in detail the inconsistencies, particularly with the national surveys that we use in terms of how um, inequality is measured. And then we try to describe the trends using data from 1992 to 2016 2017. And then what we do then is to compare those inequality estimates with what the with companion um, actually does. So just to give you a broad idea of what the inequality story has been in Ghana, um, uh, for data has actually shown or has been well documented that for the past um, decade or so, um, Ghana has been um, recording very impressive um, economic growth rate. But unfortunately, this rising economic growth has also been associated with increasing um, inequality. And what we actually find in our case is the fact that when we decompose the inequality um, estimates be, um, into within um, inequality and between inequality, largely for Ghana, we find that inequality seems to be um, a within you know um, issue because the subgroups, um, the, the inequality um, coefficients that we find are higher within groups compared to um, between um, groups. So I'm just going to show the trends um, for consumption inequality, labor market inequality, particularly focusing on wage um, employment. And then I would also give a broader perspective considering um, access to social amenities. And I would like to um, 
mention here that even though I stated earlier that the data starts from 1992 to 2017, for this particular presentation, I'm only focusing on um, the, the last three rounds of the Ghana Living Standards Survey. Uh, and the reason is that these three surveys are more comparable in terms of the instruments that are used to collect the data. So um, it makes it easier for us to actually compare um, you know, what is going um, on in terms of inequality. So we do find that um, inequality is increasing over time, as we can see from the graphs on the left panel. And as I mentioned earlier, when we disaggregate by different subgroups, urban, rural, um, regional levels, and also um, educational levels, we do see that inequality in Ghana is mainly um, within groups. So that tells us that there are no particular group that is driving the inequality that we find in Ghana. It's ba mainly based on systemic factors within the, the economy. And what I show on the um, right um, panel is just giving you an idea of the heterogeneity in terms of um, the Gini coefficient, right? So we see that um, over the three waves of the survey, some regions have recorded declines um, in inequality, whilst other regions have also recorded increases in inequality. So basically what this means is that um, there, are main, there are differences in terms of um, the inequalities um, that we find. And it's also interesting to note that the regions that have high levels of poverty are the ones that are actually associated with increasing um, inequality in Ghana. So here I'm showing um, wage inequality and I, as I mentioned earlier, this is mainly for paid employees. And then we see that um, for the three waves of the data, in wage inequality seems to be um, decreasing. And this this is mainly because of a policy that um, the country had sometime in 2009 where um, you know, the, the government tried to you know, um, bridge the gaps in terms of um, wage, wages um, for different people or categories of people. And I also wanted to share what the asset inequality was, um, looked like over the, um, the three waves. So we see um, that between 2006 and 2013 there was, a, um, in, there was an increase in inequ asset inequality but then this um, dipped um, in 2016, 2017. 2017. And here, mainly, I just want to show the regional differences with um, when it comes to access to social and economic services, for instance, um, and amenities. So we see um, regional differences when we look at things like access to electricity and also access to sanitation. Um, the for, again, um, relatively richer regions seem to have more um, equal access um, compared to other poorer regions who do not have access. And the same goes to um, sanitation. Now, um, I want to talk a bit about the data that um, we use at ASA and what um, the UNU wider team also um, makes use of in their analysis, mainly the weight um, original and also the weight companion. All the data that um, are being used by these two different groups, if I can say that, is based on the Ghana Living Standards Survey, which is the main nationally representative data set that is available for inequality studies. Overall, we have a total of um, seven rounds starting from 1988 to 89, um, and the latest round that we have is in 2017. Now, it's, um, I have to mention that um, all the rounds are not completely comparable. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's only the last three rounds that are comparable. And like Carlos mentioned in his introductory remarks, some measures, um, almost every year has a different um, like, you know, measure, so it becomes difficult actually monitoring inequality uh, measures. So some of the years would have expenditure per capita, others would have adult equivalents. Other, in some years, income would be uh, measured as gross. Um, others will be mentioned at net, as, as net um, income. Others don't even have um, those data at all. And um, in the last two rounds, for instance, additional items had been added to the consumption basket in terms of the um, uh, computation of inequality, uh, consumption expenditure. So as I mentioned, the most recent three rounds have more identical instruments and are more comparable, and so that's what we actually rely on. So what is the narrative, inequality narrative, that is coming out of um, the weight original and then the, um, the weight companion? And um, I'm going to leave the, you know, the whole methodology of the weight companion later on for us to discuss. But basically, on the left-hand panel, the blue line is showing um, what we'll call the weight original, which is just 
you know, you and you wider just trying to compile all the data bases uh, uh, for inequality measures for different countries. So basically, they also tap into the national surveys. So um, the blue line is what you would have, and this is. Um, uh, uh, this would be the consumption inequality. But what um, the orange line is showing is the standardized um, income inequality that is measured by the UNU wider team where they do this um, conversion um, from consumption inequality into um, income inequality. And they use um, this methodology. And for countries like Ghana and Kenya, who were not particularly in part of the data, what they do is to use this predictive um, regressions to be able to project to see, you know, convert basically the consumption inequality into um, income inequality. So as you would expect, you know, um, income inequality is definitely higher than consumption inequality, so that's no surprise there. But what we see is that, at least for the two, for the consumption inequality, which is depicted by the blue line, and then for income inequality, which is from the weight standardized um, data, um, we do see that over time, inequality, whether consumption or um, income, is actually increasing. And the fact that they are actually parallel tells us that um, the rate of increase or the slope is actually similar, so they are actually growing um, um, at the same um, pace. What, are, what we do on the other side is just to bring in the national um, estimates of um, consumption inequality. And like I said, um, this would be very similar to what Puff Carlnet actually um, uh, reports. For some reason, the national, the Ghana Statistical Service report um, actually shows a slight difference, even though overall this is actually very related or um, closer to what we find with the Puff Carlnet. But then again, we see the um, with standardized estimates being above, indicating um, that income inequality rates estimates are higher than the um, than the um, consumption inequality. Now, what do we find? Now, even though um, I, you know inc income um, estimates are not usually the preferred choice for the, uh, the Ghana Statistical Service because of the obvious reasons, right? Um, trying to get income data is always very difficult. So they are more comfortable reporting consumption inequality compared to income inequality. But what we did was that once the data was available, we, we calculated the Gini coefficients using the um, income aggregates that were reported in the data. And this is what is um, pr presented in the gray, grayish line. So the blue line is still showing the consumption inequality by Puff Calnet, and then the orange line is still showing the um, income inequality that is um, estimates that is reported by um, the weight standardized. So basically we wanted to find out how our estimates from the national service would compare with what the UNU wider team had done using the weight standardized. And when we started, we actually saw that um, there was some disparity from the beginning, but then as time went on, this gap actually closed. But, um, so we thought, okay, um, then the uh, weight standardized was doing a good job of predicting um, income inequality, given that we're also using national um, service. But then beyond 2006, we actually saw this huge gap, right, in terms of um, what we were finding as uh, income inequality compared to what the UNU wider team was actually um, finding, and we did not really understand why, right. So this this is what we find from our um, analysis that you know to some extent there there are some you know the. the from the beginning, there was good predictive power, but then at some point, it wasn't really um, fitting anymore. So just to conclude uh, my talk, I see the zero sign. <laughs> um, we do, uh, we acknowledge how useful this database is in terms of, you know, allowing us to be able to do comparative um, analysis when it comes to income inequality. So um, this, um, you know, database that is being compiled by you and you other is definitely a step in the right direction. Now, what we actually need to do going forward is to really um, have a deeper understanding. We, more research is actually required to understand the best ways to actually compute um, these um, income inequality particularly for countries where um, consumption inequality or consumption estimates are what are being um, used. So I would conclude by saying that definitely the Wood Companion makes a very good attempt at providing income inequality measures, but we still need um, to understand more because the, um, the methodology that they use is actually based on other African countries, particularly South Africa, which is very, very much different from, you know, Ghana. So we wouldn't be able to, you know, 
project what we are finding in South Africa, for instance, to other countries like um, Ghana. So thank you very much.